So 9.3 is quadratic inequalities in two variables, and that's on pages 488 to 500 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of inequalities, including one variable quadratic inequalities, and two variable linear and quadratic inequalities. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to make a connection between linear and quadratic inequalities with two variables. Number two, to be able to sketch a quadratic inequality. And number three, to be able to solve a problem that involves quadratic inequalities. So recall that when dealing with linear inequalities with two variables, we followed these steps. Number one, we graphed the line. In this case, we're going to be graphing the parabola. Number two, we're going to find a test point that's not on the line, so not on the parabola. And number three, we're going to shade the appropriate area. Remember that if with our test point, if it makes our inequality true, then we shade towards that test point. And if that inequality is not true, then we shade away from that test point. The process will remain the same with quadratics. So you will, you will need to know all the important aspects of parabolas, x and y intercepts, and location of vertex. So it helps you um, graph the parabola and then also find out where that test point should be. So it says graph y is greater than x minus 4 squared minus 2 and determine if the point 2 comma 1 is a solution to the inequality. Well, in order to graph this thing, we're going to find the vertex. And the vertex is easy to find because it's already in vertex graphing form. The vertex is at 4 comma negative 2. We're going to find the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So if x equals 0, we get negative 4 squared, which is 16, minus 2, which is 14. So our y-intercept is at 0 comma 14. And our x-intercepts are a little bit harder to find. We could um, take this equation. This y equals x minus 4 squared minus 2. You could expand the whole thing and then use the quadratic formula. But what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to set y equal to 0 and then use the concept of the square root property. So I'm going to move the 2 over. So I get 2 equals x minus 4 squared. Take the square root of both sides. So I get plus or minus root 2 equals x minus 4. And then I just move the negative 4 over. So I get 4 plus or minus root 2 equals x. So in order to graph this thing, we're going to change those to decimals. So 4 plus root 2 is 5.41. And 4 minus root 2 is 2.59. So there's my two y, or sorry, x-intercepts. So when I'm going to sketch this out, I'm just going to graph that this one in red. So I've got a vertex at 4, comma, negative 2. So 4, comma, negative 2 would be somewhere down here. I've got a y-intercept at y equals uh, 0, comma, 14. I've got two x-intercepts, one at 5.41 and one at 2.59. So here's 2.59-ish. Um, here's 5.41-ish. So here's my parabola. Oops, I already made a mistake. When you're graphing inequalities, make sure that um, you take a look at the inequality sign. And because there's no equal sign here, the inequality that I graph should be, oh, there we go, it should be a dotted line. Now I need to determine which way to shade. Well, you need to pick a test point. And they gave us a point 2 comma 1, so that might as well be our test point. So we're going to plug it into our parabola, 2 comma 1. So we get 1 is greater than 2 minus 4 squared minus 2. Um, that leaves us with 1 is greater than 2 minus 4 squared is negative 2 squared, which is 4 minus 2. So the question is, is 1 greater than 4 minus 2? which is 2, and that is no. So 2 comma 1 is not a solution to this inequality. Now, because it's a sketch here, we might need to pick a different point, because 2 comma 1, I don't know exactly where that is because of my sketch. So I'm going to plug in a 0, 0 just to see which, which area I need to shade. So I'm either going to be shading towards 0, 0, which would be everything outside this parabola, or I'm going to be shading away from 0, 0, which would be everything inside this parabola. So if I plug in a 0, 0, I get 0 is greater than uh, negative 4 squared minus 2 and that is 0 is greater than uh, 14 and since 0 is not greater than 14 then I'm not shading towards 0 0 I'm going to be shading in everything else so a satellite dish is 60 centimeters in diameter and 20 centimeters deep the dish has a parabolic cross-section so it just means it looks like a parabola Locate the vertex of the parabolic cross-section at the origin and sketch the parabola that represents the dish. Determine an inequality that shows the region from which the dish can receive a signal. So we're just saying that there's a parabola here. 
and its vertex is at the origin. That's a terribly John problem. The vertex is at the origin, and it says that it's 60 centimeters in diameter, so that means the distance from here to here is 30 centimeters, and it's 20 centimeters deep, which means the distance from here to here is 20 centimeters. So I should have just stopped my parabola right there and there. Okay, so I need to find the equation of this thing. So to find the equation of this thing, well, I'm going to put it into vertex graphing form. And since they said the vertex is at 0, 0, then I can just put it as 0 for p and q. So I get ax squared. Well, I need to find a value for a. So I'm going to plug in one point that I know that's on the parabola. And that point, and that point can't be the vertex. So the point that I'm going to choose is this point right here. This point happens to be 20 over and 30 up. So I'm going to put in a 30 for y and a 20 for x. So I get a times 400 is equal to 30, which means a is 30 over 400. And that makes it 3 over 40. So my, vert, my equation of this problem is y equals uh, 3 quarters, 3 quarters, 3 over 40 x squared. Now, the question is we need to locate, uh, sorry, we need to show an inequality for this thing because we're trying to show the region from which the dish can receive a signal. So that means everything inside the parabola. Well, if you're not quite sure if, if that's going to be a greater than or less than sign, we'll just use a test point and see what happens. So I'm going to choose a test point that I know that is um, in that parabola, and that's going to be 0, comma, say 10. So if I put in 0, 10, I'm going to see what happens. So 10 is here, and I get 3 40ths times 0 squared. So I get 10 and 0. So what inequality is going to make this true? Well, 10 is greater than 0. So that means my final answer is y is greater than 3 over 40 x squared. So in summary, you can answer quadratic inequalities the same way that you answered linear inequalities, and that was with graphing the line or the quadratic, choosing a test point, and then determining uh, which way to shade. Remembering that if there's no equal sign, we use a dotted line, and if there is an equal sign, we can use a solid line. And the difference between quadratic inequalities in one variable that we did last day and two variables is that when there is only one variable, you're looking for where the quadratic is greater than or less than zero. And remember that meant that we're just looking for where it was above the x-axis or below the x-axis. But when you have two variables, you're looking for where the quadratic is greater than or less than another variable, which is y. And that's why we will shade towards that number or away from that number. And you also need to remember the skills you developed in finding the equation of a quadratic, because that's going to come in quite handy as well. So today, your assignment's on page 496 to 500. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.